Live. All right, and we're live. All right, another victim to a heart of lies. This is a really exciting episode. We are Striker. here. Yes, we are really excited to talk Striker. Striker's done some interesting stuff recently, and hell, their whole history. So we definitely got a lot to get into. Uh, yeah. First things first, got a couple of pieces of news. Uh, I, I'm Jack Mangan. Uh, wearing the Opeth shirt today. Uh, you know me from Metal Hall of Fame, MetalAsylum.net, and the Am I Evil graphic novel, which is making progress. Uh, we're, we have some big announcements coming for the Am I Evil graphic novel, so stay tuned for that. Also, Rich and I, check out the MetalHallOfFame.org, um, that website on the Metal Today and Metal Legacy. Rich and I have right. some articles. I just posted my article for November, so that's right. there. And, and also, one more thing, and we promise we're going to get oh, to wait, that. Jack, while you're speaking of the Metal Hall, we actually have an article with Stryker that includes Stryker as part of the write-up that I did for the new wave of traditional heavy metal. Even though Stryker is really, Stryker at this point are really not new anymore, but part of that <laughs> newer, you know, the newer wave of the traditional heavy metal. So Stryker were included in that article that I wrote a couple months ago. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And, let, and let's, you know, let's definitely, we definitely need to touch on that. Um, but the yeah. last bit of news is just for these live streams, we're, this is exciting. This is a big one for, like I said, Rich and I are big Stryker fans. This is awesome. Talking to Dan from Stryker. <laughs> Later yeah. this week we have Vitalik, Vitalika, and next week we have Frank Bello from Anthrax. So we're, you know, we're back, Oops. baby. We're, we're kicking butt. So, all right, enough about me. I'm going to shut up and do a little bit of my thing. But, Rich, how uh -huh. are you doing? All right, how's it going? What's up, Dan? Welcome. Hey, uh, not much, man. Just uh, happy to be here. And tell, her, tell everybody what you do in the band for people that don't know Stryker, because you guys are considered one of the newer bands and for people that are not totally familiar with the new generation. Tell us who you are, what you do in the band, and a little bit about Stryker's history. Sure. Um, I'm Dan, and I'm the lead singer of the band, Stryker. And uh, we've been around since 2007. It's been a long time, feels like now. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we just play heavy metal. And you got one, two, three, four, six albums. No, yeah, six albums now. Yeah, seems crazy. Cranking them up. Yeah. Six albums. <laughs> and um, then the new single. So let's right, yeah. let's get into that. Jack, you want to ask the question about the elephant in the room or you want me to ask it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's talk. Let's get right into the controversy. So because you guys stirred up some panic uh, among your yeah. fan base in the heavy metal world because we all saw suddenly we saw this tombstone that said Striker 2007 to 2021 and we all panicked. So tell us a little bit right. about the, the tombstone that accompanied and, Death Wish. And was it connected to the single or was it something just to stir up, you know, see if there was enough interest still in the band? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I guess I, I'll kind of have to go back a little bit and uh, just to talk about, you know, like 2021 was kind of a, a brutal year for us. Like we just like n nonstop cancellations. I mean, even in 2020, we had like a really awesome year lined up. And starting with 70,000 tons, which actually happened. And then festivals in Europe and all this stuff in the summer. And like, and then that all got like wiped out. And we're like, okay, let's, let's figure out what we can do. Like, uh, you what, know, what uh, you festivals? Start... I'm sorry not to interrupt you, but what festivals were you guys going to be playing? Um, I don't know if I can say because we're oh, okay. maybe going to get things results, didn't happen. So, okay. Yeah. Right. Things just didn't okay. work out. But, uh, right. Um, yeah. So, eventually you know we're, we're trying to be like an online band or whatever you know everybody's scrambling to be like oh we need to do live streams and all this stuff and then uh you know eventually like earlier in uh this year we kind of got burnt out and like honestly we almost broke up as a band and like it it, it almost happened and because you know the, the vibe was pretty we were all pretty low because mm -hmm. everybody's back doing their day job grinding that out and then like there's no you can't play live anywhere it's just like things sort of yeah. feel like they're grinding to a halt so we almost did break up and like we we eventually worked it out and figured out you know i think as as soon as like live stuff sort of seemed feasible on the horizon we were like okay like you know let's figure it out and then uh we uh we had recorded already like in the well, at the start of this year we had death wish uh already recorded and we just i don't know i i just thought of like it would be funny to announce 
like soft announced that we were like no longer a band because that's sort of what it felt like all year because we were really quiet on social media like we, were, we weren't right. really doing anything so um and like behind the scenes we were just kind of just taking it easy and and so we figured like you know to make a bit of a splash back into being mm -hmm. online and stuff we, right. we post this thing which was the, the sort of like the single artwork um but with dates on it and and we actually <laughs> We ran the idea past like a few people and most people were like, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> and then we were like, eh, we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> and was this before or after the, the, uh, the idea for this, the um, Lizzie Bourne cover of Me Against the World? Because that was a cool, fun cover in the video too. So where did that fit into the timeline of the single and the, the headstone and this going on? Oh, when did we release that? I guess that was earlier in or was it in the summer of last year um it looks remember. like yeah i'm looking at i'm looking at the video it says january 2021 oh okay hmm. i think we must have we must have like recorded that and filmed the video in like maybe the fall of 2020 okay. and then released it because right. I, I, like at the time, like that was part of what we were doing. We were like, well, let's just do some covers and like have fun mm -hmm. and, and, and record stuff, which was actually a lot of fun. But um, that stuff starts to like eat away at your time when you're like working. Because like I think with with all of us sort of not, you know, like we're seeing like touring is just not going to happen. It's like, well, it would be crazy not to like work save some money and stuff so everybody got really busy with that stuff so it was a lot harder to keep up with some of that stuff mm -hmm. so are you guys all based out of edmonton uh yeah that where okay so that makes it easy at least you know if you want to get together and, and play you can you don't have to have somebody like drive 10 hours or fly in that that yeah, at least yeah. is that yeah <laughs> yeah um but i did want to ask back on the, on the tombstone thing did you what tell us about the the reaction you got because i saw a lot of panic i saw a lot of your fans going oh no you know, <laughs> my favorite band yeah. so tell us about the yeah. reaction you got and is that that's not the artwork though for death wish is it or is that the artwork it is yeah it's just okay. without we we took like the the 2007 the to 2021 yeah the dates off right. of it okay um yeah, like the honestly, it was like really nice to see <laughs> in a weird way. <laughs> you know, we got a lot of people like messaging us and, and, and stuff like that. Like, just a lot of really nice comments and all kinds of stuff. A lot of support, really. Like, um, so that was nice to see that people were like, you know, still into the band after all this time and, you know, would rather see us keep going than, than fold. So. That was really, that's a really uh, good boost for us, actually. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you, you know, uh, Play to Win. I know Rich and I both had that as our top albums of the year. Uh, you know, like, yeah. and that was it. Nice. It's, it's, you guys are, yeah, we want to see you guys keep up this momentum. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. And that was, uh, what year was that? That was 18, Play to Win. Yeah. So it's been a couple of years since you guys have a new album. So is the new song part of more songs for a new album? Uh, it's... <laughs> We we recorded three new songs like right. that was at the end of 2020. So we got a couple more that we're gonna release as singles, and then we're right now we're working on new material for like our, our tour with Unleash the Archers that was going to happen like at the end of the month here uh, was canceled. So we've sort of had to switch to uh, you know back to writing and and then uh, we'll we've got lots of we got lots of ideas lots of stuff so we've been i mean despite the band being sort of quiet and social media and stuff we've all been like writing music and stuff like that so there's lots there's lots there to choose from so okay. so there you go striker fans that's some good news um uh, <laughs> yeah. well i mean you, you touched on something i wanted to touch on um so what else so you got writing and sounds like you know an album you know, sometime in the future, you guys have any any live shows at all? I understand the, the tour. I mean, it's a bummer about the tour, especially with a great band like Unleash the Archers. Do you have any kind of live, anything on the horizon for for live shows? Yeah, we have one. We have one live show coming up. It's uh, at the end of the month here in Edmonton, uh, and it's it's funny. Our um, our new drummer, so Adam, our old drummer, uh, he quit, and then we only played with our, our new drummer, John, we only played 70,000 tons and that was it. 
but and he's been in the band for like two and a half years almost <laughs> it's like ridiculous and he's played wow. one show with us <laughs> so uh he's really he's really excited to play in uh another show finally <laughs> like, mm. after all this time yeah so, yeah right. at the end of the month yeah we go on cool. are you there already you go. go ahead jack no i was just saying cool go ahead are you already possibly working on some shows for 22 or some yeah, festivals? Yeah, we're, uh, I see a lot of people are starting to, you know, book shows and, and tours and uh, especially the big festivals are in Europe, or, uh, over in Europe. So are a lot of those things maybe starting to happen now? Yeah, things are start, sort of finally starting to mm-hmm. come together. So we'll see. Sure. Uh, hopefully we can do some announcements soon, but uh, we do have some touring opportunities on the horizon as long as everything works out and, uh, and then, yeah, hopefully some festivals in the summer, too. So we'll see. <laughs> all right. All right. So not to fixate completely on Edmonton, all this Edmonton stuff, but, you know, we'll, we'll ask more about the band, the music and everything. But talk to me a little, a little bit about the, the music scene up there. I know you've got Unleash the Archers. I know Chris Jericho, Devin Townsend is Calgary. Tell us a little bit about the, the scene, the Western Canadian metal and music scene. It's always been really good. Um Lots of really great bands. I mean, like even like you said, Unleash the Archers. We've been friends with them for since we started. Like they were like a band that we would you know go see or we'd play with way back in the day, or you know mm-hmm. like so. Um, and that's been really fun to see them. Like they've been really reaching like some insane levels lately, which is a lot of fun to see people that you've sort of grown up with like killing it like that and. Uh, yeah, like overall, the scene's been great. There's a lot of great new bands like um, Riot City and Traveler are both from here in Alberta. Oh, yeah. I think they're both yeah. out of Calgary. but uh, And they're part of that new wave of traditional heavy metal too, as you guys would be considered part of. Yeah, they're like, they're like yeah. the new new wave, which is yeah. funny to me. <laughs> right, because you guys would like, you guys and like Enforcer and a few of those other bands are like the first wave, you know? Yeah, it's super funny to think about it, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Yeah. Cool. All right, Rach, go ahead. Um, well, I was going to ask you about that, the new wave of traditional heavy metal. Now this would be the second wave. So what are some bands that you recommend that people may not know about that? Because there's so many out there now, and there's so many great bands and so many great albums, you know? Yeah. Um, let me think here. Well, there's Riot City and Traveler, both mm-hmm. great bands. Um, who else? Um, just recently I was listening to a band, uh, seven sisters. I don't know. I think they're from the, they're from the UK. They just released a new album. It's really good. Um, who else we got the new, I'm trying to think like the new guys. Uh, I got got a bunch of names here. I'm going to throw some names at you. Are you guys? Everybody knows anybody. How about ambush? Yeah. Yeah. From Sweden. You know them? Jack, do you know them? Oh yeah, yeah. We reviewed their okay. last year. Uh, yeah. Eternal Champion. Yeah, they've been around a little bit longer, but yeah. Okay. Um, Haunt. Haunt. Yep. Heard them. Haunt. Um, I think they're Burning going Witches. With... Yeah, we played with Burning Witches uh, in Germany. Oh, okay. At a, a big uh, at a festival thing or whatever it was. Nice. Cool. Um, Skull Fist, but they're older too, though. Skull Fist. Yeah, they started they're like part of that first wave with you guys, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. How about Road Wolf? Not Power Wolf, but Road Wolf. Yeah, Road Wolf. I I listened to their album. It, um, okay. it was really good. Yeah, I thought they were great too. Yeah, yeah. You can't leave out one of our other favorites is Icarus Witch. It's another one. I don't know if you guys Icarus heard. Witch. Yeah, Icarus mm-hmm. Witch and uh, and Seven Kingdoms, of course, are two other ones that I think uh, yeah are are great. Um, but mm-hmm. we'll get let's get philosophical a second. Tell us what, you, what how, why do you think this is the time for the resurgence of traditional metal at this point in in the 21st century? <laughs> I don't know because no, I don't think anybody <laughs> thinks it's very cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we do, but like um, in the mainstream, I don't know. I, I mean, people got to be getting bored of like rap, man. I don't know. It's <laughs> that's tough. It's a lot. I of just think tough listen. <laughs> I just think that you, everybody, you guys have to carry on the traditions of all the classics. There's got to be another generation, the new generation, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of those, a lot of those guys are getting pretty old now. Although, like, <laughs> Scorpions just released a song that was like pretty good. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and Klaus can still hit it. I mean, amazing. You know. I know. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
But hey, you know, that's a good segue. I mean, tell us a little bit about how you developed your voice. You know, great, powerful voice, great for this music. And just, you know, how did, how did you develop it? And who are singers that you idolized was your, yeah. as you were kind of coming up? And... Um, sort of like in the, in the early days, I listened to a ton of uh, Vicious Rumors, which was like a band that I was like super into. And I still great am, band. but. Yeah, um, great band. I hear yeah, a lot of them. I, I hear a lot of them too in your music in the first first three albums. I would say, yeah, that would make sense because I, yeah. I was pretty hard into the them for quite a while. And like, uh-huh. not that I sound much like uh, uh, Carl Albert, but right. Um, I mean, I just think you know he, he had a good mix of uh, powerful singing and then also like singing really high stuff, which I, right. I've always been a fan of. So, right, yeah, and then like uh, I mean, obviously all the classics like Rob Halford and Bruce Dickinson and stuff. That was always a, a, a an influence. Yeah. I hear that too, for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Um, all right, Rich. All right. You got? Well, tell us a little bit how the music evolved with Stryker, because those first couple albums, um, Eyes, of the, Eyes in the Night and Arm to the Teeth is a little more like Vicious Rumors, a little more speed metal, you know, mm-hmm. Racer X, that kind of stuff. And then by the time you get the City of Gold and Sand in the Fire, it gets more melodic. So tell us a little bit about how the music is evolving, because I notice it's getting more, more, you know, um, turning into not, a glam not metal, metal, metal band. but a lot, of, a lot of 80s, a little bit of the, the 80s hard rock and the glam metal, a little bit of AOR rock in there. So it's a really good mixture. So tell us about how it's Man. been evolving. <laughs> None of our drummers want to play double kick anymore. <laughs> It's getting lazy. They don't want to go on tour and play double kick all night. No, that's not that's not it. But um, I, I don't know. It's just like uh, we've sort of never had like an agenda or anything when we when we mm. sat down to write. I think you know, um, as with most people, the older we've gotten, our like our tastes have broadened. I was mm. just talking about this the other day. Like I remember back when I was like absolutely against children of Bodom because they had like uh ho- like harsh vocals right and like right. it seems so silly now to me but at the time i was like really like if it's not like you know judas priest or iron maiden mm. i i won't listen to it and then i was like oh but i really like the guitar playing and then eventually yeah. i'm like oh okay the singing grew on me and then and now i like you know all you know from black metal death metal whatever it's uh but yeah like uh I think just our, our tastes as musicians have broadened and then that sort of has led to us, you know, right. mixing more stuff in. And, yeah. Cause you guys have a nice mix of all types of metal, but it's very melodic metal, which is very cool. Yeah. yeah that's always been a big thing for us. It's like, I've, we've always liked uh, the melodic side of things like yeah. lots of guitar. Like, I mean, we've always wanted to have like, Def Leppard choruses and stuff like that. Yeah, and, you know, and you really hear that on the newest album too. Those yeah. big hooks. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. we try. <laughs> we try. <laughs> but it's still. Yeah, I think still you, guys the heavy you guys are doing great. So I think it's <laughs> working. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, but it's still bring the heaviness. I mean, it's not. It's not yeah, like the, the riffs are always heavy. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. This isn't like what the cat dragged in. I mean, you know, you still got like you know, heart of lie. It still kicks your ass. I mean, it's still a good. <laughs> blistering open but uh but i mean that's a, this is a good question good time to bring up uh the saxophone <laughs> are we gonna get more saxophone from you guys in the future <laughs> it's a great idea i, I mean it, we we've underutilized it i think honestly we, with one song um yeah we got to get a little more adventurous we need like maybe a horn section we've always wanted to do something like i don't know i'm a big huey lewis fan I've always loved like the, the they have like the horn section yeah. in there and everything. It's just like Thank I don't you. know. It'd be funny. Or, to try uh, who's the other band that uses saxophone? Foreigner. Work for Foreigner. For yeah, Foreigner. yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, they wrote hits, man. Yeah, yeah for, lots of them. So. Yeah. Or the new the newest Ghost album. He had a saxophone solo and everyone went nuts. Oh, like, yeah, that's oh, right. You know, <laughs> people were, were freaking out about it. But, yeah. uh, underrated instrument. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> so you but guys they need still to have but, but Ghost too. They have heavy riffs, but they're still melodic, and they got catchy hooks. So it's a great formula. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I, we like it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I see some parallels for sure. Um, all right, Rich, I guess it's your turn with a question. And also if you, you guys out there watching, if you have a question for Stryker, we got Dan, the singer from Stryker here. 
So bring it. Well, go, go ahead, Jack, because I know you wanted to ask about the award that they got in Canada. Um, well, yeah, actually, you know, um, actually, I, I know some Canadian artists, know some people up there. So I know that, as you know, you know, Americans, we're all ignorant. And, you know, we don't know what's going on up there. But, you know, I know a Juno is a big deal. A Juno Award is, is like basically like a Grammy. It's pretty awesome. So tell us about that experience. I mean, is that, it must have been a huge honor, right? Or is there, tell us about it. Yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a really cool thing. Like, um, I always joke about it. It's like, it's, it's a nice thing to have to tell people who don't listen to metal and they're like, Oh, you're like a real band. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, um, but yeah, it was, it was really cool to get. I mean, it's just like such a, um, awesome. Uh, I mean, without sounding too cheesy, it's like an honor to get, you know, um, it's not quite as many as, Kim Mitchell has, I think he has like 16 or something. If you know who Kim Mitchell is, <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, it was great. I mean, unfortunately, like the day we were supposed to go to the actual like award show, uh, we were like, we were going to play that weekend in, in that city. And like, we had packed up all our gear and we were waiting and we were like watching, we were like refreshing uh, Twitter to find out whether or not they were going to cancel it because it, it was in 2020 and it was in March. I think no. it was. And that's when everything April. happens. Yeah, things were starting to get like crazy. And then, and yeah, they ended up canceling it that day. So we were just like, well, whatever. And then they didn't actually uh, announce the winners until the end of June, which was, no. it's okay. They did it on like a live stream thing, which wasn't quite the same as we had, we had gone to the Juno Award show. Uh, we were nominated for our self titled album too. And we had gone to that, and that was like a crazy fun time. Like, we, I don't know, we felt so out of place. It's like, I've never been somewhere where they had like drinks on trays where they would like walk by and just, just <laughs> grab whatever you want. And like, so that was a lot of fun. So it was too bad we couldn't be there and like mm. have that experience again. But I mean, us and everybody else, right? Sure. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. No, well, well deserved. Yeah. All right, Rich. What do you got? So, what's the, um, Biggest band or the opportunity you ever had for an opening tour or the biggest show that you guys ever played? Biggest show? Uh, well, b back in 2011, we, we peaked early because we opened for Metallica in Edmonton. Oh, wow. <laughs> two, wow. Nights, two nights in a row. It was crazy. Where? Uh, in Canada? Was that like the, yeah, it was in, in Edmonton. Uh, okay. they, had, they, they were doing that through the Never Tour where they were filming it. And mm. so it was sort of like, it wasn't really a tour there, but they, they had this crazy production going on and they were sort of like right. ironing out all the kinks by playing live shows in different places. And uh, they had like a, like sort of a radio contest thing that we ended up being the winners of. Nice. Uh, and nice. yeah, so we like played like the giant stage. It was, oh. it was nuts. <laughs> and were all the fans there already too? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't like, you know, people were still filtering yeah. in, but there was a lot of people there, so we were pretty stoked. I mean, that's the biggest stage I've ever been on by a mile. It was like the one where, it I don't know if you've seen the movie, but it's like massive in the yeah. round stage. There's people everywhere. It's nuts. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Did you meet Did you meet them through that? Whole yeah. Experience? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we, uh, it was, well, it was really funny because like the backstage area that they gave us because they had so much equipment, they didn't really have like a room for us to be in. They just kind of had like an area under the, <laughs> under the bleachers or whatever kind of thing. And, uh, but it was in between where they would arrive and their dressing room. So they constantly had to walk past us. And of course we were just like, Ooh, <laughs> you know, like, Hey man, like what's up? And, uh, and we had some good uh, um, stuff to talk about, like stuff in common because we worked with Michael Wagner on uh, arm to the teeth who had done, right. Uh, master of puppets mm. I believe it was yeah so um you know and they were like oh this is the one that wagner did and we're like you know take a cd bro <laughs> like all that yeah. so yeah that's cool and they uh yeah, they hung out with us and uh cool you know talked mm. to us and so yeah it was it was great i mean they were really nice guys i couldn't even believe it they were so down to earth yeah, that's the reputation they have. And actually, Jen Chapman says that was a fantastic show. So there you go. Jen Chapman was there. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> um, 
Uh, that's awesome. That, that's very cool. Um, uh, well, I wanted to add, I know Rich and I were both, we were chatting about this. So I know you guys have done a couple of covers in the past, official covers. And, you know, we, we've got the Me Against the World and Two Minutes to Midnight. Do uh, you guys have any more on the horizon or are you thinking about doing anything like that officially or even unofficially? Mm, we we haven't talked about it yet, but uh, uh, it's it's not out of the question. I mean, we may, maybe we'll bring back, since we're back to doing stuff, maybe we'll bring back the... Uh, the fan selected one. I thought that was really fun just to like, we got everybody to comment what, what they wanted. And then we put it in like a random generator thing and it just picked one. And that, that's how we did the last, uh, or the Lizzie Borden one, oh, okay. nice. which well, Rich, incidentally is a great song anyway. So, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great folk. Yeah. Great chance for you to shine vocally too. Yeah. It's great, great song. <laughs> Well, Rich and I have a list that we're going to give you for. Uh, no, I'm kidding. No, 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 no. <laughs> the choice is recommendation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but I look forward to that. That'd be cool. Yeah, I, I, the you know kind of ballsy takes on on those songs. So that's cool. Um, all right. Yeah, like I said, if you're out there watching, if you have any questions, by all means, feel free. And Rich, go ahead. I think it's your turn with a question. All right. So you mentioned um, uh, live shows um, virtual. Were you thinking of doing anything between now and when you play shows, or? until you get to do shows again, you know, in between this one show you're going to do and then next year, maybe a couple of live streams or something. Uh, yeah, we, we, I don't know. We're sort of on the fence with the live stream mm -hmm. stuff. Like I, I mean, I've, I've watched a few, I've seen a few good ones. I've also seen a few like rough ones. Cause it's hard to get the sound right. Like, and it's sort of nothing worse than just hearing like a band perform dry, even if they're the best band, it's just like, if it's not mixed well, it's just like kind of. Uh, you know, well, you did so. those in studio things. Yeah, yeah. Which but, was like, tell I mean, tell everybody about that. What you did with that? Yeah, so th this way it actually worked out really well for us because we had already had that idea because we were kind of just like, well, what should we do? And we were, were mm -hmm. like, well, why don't we do songs? Um, uh, and incidentally, the reason why there's no songs off of anything before. Uh, stand in the fire is because we don't have the rights to that until oh. two years from now. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we'll re-record those eventually, but uh, okay. yeah, oh, actually I think we can do them now, but at the time we, we, we were still under like the napalm contract. So, uh, but yeah, anyway, so we, we went to a studio here in Edmonton and uh, did some live off the floor uh, recordings and then uh, got them professionally mixed, which we thought would be a cool idea to mm. just, have something out there and those and then, and then the pandemic hit and we had a, all this stuff to release and we were like oh that's great so we spent like the first half of the year just kind of releasing one at a time and you know at least there's something out yeah. there for people to check out okay. yeah that's cool yeah um i don't know if i'm getting a little so hopefully hopefully we can keep this through for the last we'll go a couple more minutes um but yeah you touched on something i wanted to ask about so the transition to name them to record breaking has been, been a good experience with you guys or are, are doing well re releasing stuff through them. Uh, yeah. Uh, mostly because record breaking records is just us. <laughs> oh, oh, so it's, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's like, that's uh, we've basically just been an independent band since uh, stand in the fire and record breaking records is like the joke. Uh, record label name that we made up and it's like our business or whatever so. okay. yeah. well i'm an idiot i'm i'm a fool you fooled me so no that's, that's, i mean that's, that's we get that all the time it's funny like lots of interviews are like well how how is it with this because i mean you i mean you don't have any reason to know that it's not just like a yeah, regular yeah. label <laughs> well cool that, that's actually that's so yeah we're treating ourselves great <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you don't have to sign stuff over to yourself. Yeah, that's good. Um, all right. Yeah, I got I got a couple more, Rich. I know you, I know you got a bunch. Um, and again, okay. if you're watching, and you have questions. Go ahead. But go ahead, Rich. So, what kind of updates are you going to be giving the fans going into the end of the year, into the new year, about what's going on with Striker? How often is it going to be? Are you going to be more active on social media? Yeah, yeah, we're trying to be right now. Um, you know, promoting the new single, and then we got we we do have two other songs that we're gonna release at some point once we figure out what to do. I mean, there's this whole thing with like, you know, um, being able to film music videos and things like that. Right now, it's a little trickier because uh, now it's a little more relaxed. But like, 
throughout this whole year, it's been like the restrictions have been like up and down and crazy. So, um, but now that it's starting to get a little, a little better, hopefully it'll stay that way. Cause last, last winter was rough for us. Like as soon as Christmas right. was over, it was just like skyrocketed. And then that was back into no, nobody can do anything. So, uh, yeah. So hopefully everything's okay. And, uh, we can start like, you know, working with people and getting videos done and, and things like that for the songs. Cause I mean, it's fun to release music with, you know, just the music, but it's also nice to be able to do the music videos. Cause it just adds a little extra. Did the, did the reaction to death wish exceed your expectations? Uh, yeah. So far everybody, most people have liked it. Um, you know, we get the odd comment where they're like, I don't like anything after eyes of the night or whatever, you know, <laughs> it's like, uh, um, but yeah, like, I, I mean, it's so funny. That kind of thing is so funny. Cause it, even like when we recorded our EP, the road warrior EP, and then we released eyes in the night, we played right after that. We played in Germany and I had a guy come up to me at a show and was like, I don't like your singing on the new album. I only like it on the last one. It's like, it's like, I, Oh, Oh, it's been like one EP, man. Right. Like, at least let us get to like a little yeah. bit later, but so, yeah. But but for the most part, people have uh, seemed to really like it, so we're pretty stoked on that. Great. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, and so I wanted to just touch on like the reality of being in a metal band. I mean, we touched on this a little bit, but I wanted to ask like, what was it that made you guys say like, yeah, we want to go all in and do this for real? Because I mean, it, the reality is, you know, starting a metal band in the in this century it's probably not the way to, to, to be billionaires, but, uh, but you know, it's, it's, <laughs> so talk to us about the passion. I mean, you know, we, Rich and I get the passion, but I kind of want to hear, you know, what you're taking on it. Well, like, what was the driving force for you guys to, to make, to make this awesome band? I, you know, who knows really? Like <laughs> we just have always loved it and it's always been lots of fun. Uh, and I mean, it's a great <laughs> excuse to hang out with your friends too, which I think is great. Like, um, I mean, it, we always sort of take that for granted. And I, I'm sure a lot of bands do that. Like we're sort of like constantly in contact and, and like have sort of like this tight friend group that, you know, we're always seeing each other. We're always playing together, you know, like that kind of thing. So, I mean, th that, that's part of it too. And, uh, it's just like lots of, lots of fun and we love playing and writing metal. I think that's a, a big part of it too. So why that is why we like that i have no idea <laughs> no that's good that's a great answer actually that no, that's great um i feel that no it's good all right rich any plans to to um reissue any of the old albums yeah like like i said we're waiting to get the rights back and okay. then we'll and then we'll do it but like with napalm records um for us to get them to reprint some of that stuff they're like the minimum quantity is this much and you have to front it and we're like okay it's like brutal right so it was just like financially it's a nightmare to to reprint any of it so we're just we're just waiting um yeah. i think it's not until like maybe 2024 um yeah. but in the meantime these, re these songs... record contracts man <laughs> right right but in the meantime all your albums are available streaming and everything correct yeah oh yeah Okay. Yeah. It's all out there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if you're watching and you don't know Striker, then yeah, you absolutely go and check him out on streaming. Um, yeah, it's just again, it's great traditional heavy metal. For those of you who don't like the growl, I mean, there's not, you know, you, I think this is a little <laughs> bit more. It's not as extreme, you know. There's no churches burning or any of that kind of stuff. Um, well, he yeah, doesn't. He doesn't. He never was a growl. Like he always, he always sang. Right. Just exactly. Like saying the older, the older stuff was a little more vicious, rumors ish, a little more faster, female type style. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we we leaned a little bit more into like the hard rock, hair metal stuff. I mean, like that's always been something I've I've loved too. Uh, like mm -hmm. uh, I'm a huge hair metal fan. Like not maybe not like the faster Pussycat and and Poison stuff, but like more you know like the harder edge stuff that's like Rat and things like that, Doc and you stuff know. like that. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So I'm a well, huge. Hear, we can hear it in your music. music. You can hear it in your guys' music. You're very melodic. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I, yeah. Actually, I saw somewhere that something that said you guys went, had a thrashy sound in the beginning. I was like, I'm like, at moments here and there, maybe the double kick, but I wouldn't, yeah. really, I would have never said you guys were. It's like, yeah, player. like 
uh, there was a funny comment like someone had commented about like you know preferring the heavier stuff in our mm-hmm. facebook uh like on, i think on like the death wish post when we posted it and uh they were just saying like uh, someone chimed in and was like they've they've been a mix from the beginning like even the first right. ep was like we had some fast songs and then we had some sort of sillier like you know, hard rock hair metal song. It's like, it's always been kind of like, we're a little bit of both. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And actually that's, that's another good segue. So talk to us a little bit. Well, or, I don't know if you're the primary lyricist, but talk to us about what the lyrics I think have maybe have evolved over the years too. I mean, maybe they're even a little, a little more socially conscious, a little more, I don't know. I don't know. Or, I don't want... or if you're talking about songwriting, does everybody write the music too, or is it just you? How does that work? Um, uh, It's, for the the bulk of it is is me, and then um, okay. it goes through like the the lens of the band basically. So it'll be like you know I'll have an idea for a song that I've written, and then we'll sort of uh, as a band we'll say what is this good or is this shit like, <laughs> and then uh, and then we'll work on it from there as a band and and uh, sort of until we get the final product, and then lyric wise, um, yeah, I think we've changed. A little bit like we used to write songs like about movies like road <laughs> warrior was about obviously road warrior and then like uh the fight for your life was about gladiator the movie like it's just so and because I, I mean when we were younger it was like man we didn't have a lot of serious stuff to say you know <laughs> you know uh and then now i think we're you know we're writing a little bit more about like you know, just what's going on in our lives and, and that kind of thing too. Like we, can, we can't always write about like, you know, skeleton warriors and stuff like that. <laughs> right. It's nice to have a good variety. <laughs> well, anyway, says, yeah. Says I who. mean, we don't want to be too serious, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mix it up. Yeah. I, I think actually you can never run out of stuff on skeleton warriors. Actually. I, I'm going to disagree <laughs> with you there, but uh, I mean, no, it's, I, heavy, <laughs> it's heavy metal. So, I mean, you can't have <laughs> heavy metal without skeletons, right? <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> no it's cool i mean it's a cool and it's great to see how you guys have grown uh over the years i mean i you know i actually discovered you guys through the most recent album so for me it was i was going back through but you know i think the, the quality has been consistent i don't know rich i don't know if, if you kind of feel the same i think it's not like yeah. oh this is the, this is the best album it's like no they're they're pretty solid so i'm you know oh, thank I'm, you. I'm, I'm, <laughs> thank you. it's not a question it's just compliments <laughs> i'll take uh, it I'll take it. <laughs> uh, well, we got a couple more minutes, Rich. I mean, I don't. I mean, we got a couple more, but yeah, we'll, and we won't tie up your whole night, Dan. But uh, but Rich, go ahead and ask one or two more, and then we'll, we'll let you we'll let you go. I, you I, you everything I wrote down, I got it. So go ahead. Okay. <laughs> what do you got, Jack? Um, well, I think actually, you know, we usually leave off with um, you know with with what's coming up in the future, but I think you've touched on it. So yeah, I guess Dan, we'll just let you kind of have the last word. I will say thank you so much for the great music and thanks for coming on and talking to us yes. tonight. It's been been a yeah. hell of a good time and it's good to get an update on the band after seeing that headstone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're yeah. not we're not dead. We, we need yeah. a clarity. Still, no, we need some clarification here. <laughs> yeah, totally. Right. Yeah. Well, I hate, we hate to do that to everybody, but you know, no. at least <laughs> you know, at least we got some eyeballs on us. So it's mm-hmm. <laughs> No, it's it tough good. to stick out here in the in the digital age. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, if, yeah. If you want to just take us out with some, you know, just some messages for the fans or words of wisdom or or whatever, or go Oilers, whatever you want to say. <laughs> we'll, the, yeah, take what, us on we look, what are we what are we looking forward to? I'm sorry. Yeah, um, we've got some we've got some really cool ideas coming down the pipe here. It, it's it's uh, it'll be interesting. The next couple songs that we're going to release. Um, are going to be a little bit different too because we uh, we wrote them like in 2020 and recorded them so like they're we've been sitting on them forever so it'll be fun to see what people think of those and uh um we've even got like a little you know i was talking about huey lewis a little bit it's like we got we're getting a little crazy on some of these ones so we'll see but then um yeah i think uh we're, we're excited to sort of like get back to doing our um you know, our classic heavy metal sound. So uh, uh, everybody can look forward to that. You said the uh, the record label. What is it called again? Uh, our, our label, Record Breaking yeah. Records. Right. Are you still going under that for the new songs? And if you do a new album or do you have labels looking at you to put out the next album? Um, Like over the years, we've had lots of different labels talking to us and stuff. And it's just never mm-hmm. been like, an obvious choice it's it's you know like and we we had kind of a 
an interesting experience with napalm records where it was like it really wasn't what we thought it was going to be and, right. and that a lot of that was our own fault for being like you know sort of young and and naive when it comes to those things and it, it's like sort of like a record label is is only going to work as hard as you work they're sort of just like a a bank more than anything with with a good promo team behind them so um and it and we've been lucky here in canada too we we uh we get some arts funding and stuff like that so Oh, nice. um, but, which is a huge leg up for us. I, I don't know if there would be a way to, to do what we're doing without a label if we didn't have the support from like those uh, various places here in Canada. But uh, yeah, I, uh, I think for now we're going to stick with what we're doing um, mm -hmm. unless there's, you know, unless something crazy pops up, but it's, it, yeah. it's been tough to, to be like yeah sure we'll sign off for another you know 15 years and then never get our our rights back so it's like we're we're so close to having everything back that we're mm -hmm. just like eh. i understand so but i mean i can't rule it out because who yeah. knows right right that makes sense yeah uh, well best of luck we're looking forward to all the new stuff um uh, great career everyone out there go in and check out striker if you don't know him and uh, we look forward to seeing yeah. you back on the road when you can support support the next generation guys yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Yeah. Dan Cleary from Striker. Thank you so much, Sam. Thank thanks, you. Thanks, guys. All right. We will end.